the final segment of the show for today. Uh, the uh, topic is prejudice and racism at the 21st century, and Dr. Uh, Kelly Sanford has given us excellent information relative to some classical views of prejudice. And now I think, uh, uh, Dr. Sanford, we wish to uh, start by uh, at least making some statements, yeah. uh, then get into racism, uh, okay. which is a different kind of thing that we've been dealing with. Let's yeah, well, talk well, about absolutely. And, and we started the segment off just to reiterate a little mm -hmm. bit that prejudice is a favorable or unfavorable mm -hmm. type of action that a person might act toward another mm -hmm. without any warrant, mm -hmm. without any prior knowledge of, of that individual. And sometimes this is caught into the history of the society. And of course, here in America, we experienced 244 years of enslavement, 81 years of Jim Crow laws that led into reconstruction that was supposed to help better situations. And of course, it didn't. Those laws that were there really impacted future generations of people to look in a very prejudicial, mm -hmm. discriminatory way toward others that led into the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. that then led into as students, as you asked in the last segment, mm -hmm. born in the 90s, and somewhat are unfamiliar mm -hmm. with what happened mm -hmm. in those prior hundreds of years mm -hmm. that we've lived in America with, much longer than we've lived without. without. You see, and that's one of the major problems is why we have to still have this mm -hmm. conversation. I think if we look at the NAACP or the Urban League, and if you were to ask those leaders if there's a need, they would probably say, well, yeah, we would just love to just dismantle NAACP if there weren't prejudice and discrimination that still exists, mm -hmm. but there is. And so therefore, we want to move from understanding this unfavorable type of action toward others based on how a person might look their, or, or their gender and, and, and their so-called ethnic group that they might belong to. Um, and, and understand that that moves into the act of racism, where mm -hmm. someone physically gives you another type of treatment mm -hmm. just based on how one might look. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have to deal with. We have a local um, scholar who just recently came to speak at Tennessee State University mm -hmm. by the name of Mr. Tim Wise. Mm -hmm. And like the other book that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Black Like Me, he has a book that is entitled White Like Me. White. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the privilege that you have by being a part of the majority group. And he came to Tennessee State University to talk with a, a large mixed freshman class and those that knew about it and went. Mm -hmm. And he gives us very good commentary on how prejudice, racism still exists here in the mm -hmm. 21st century. And he goes out and he does presentations on that. And, mm -hmm. and I wanted to cite him because he does an excellent job of that. And it goes back to, as you said in the last segment, how Dr. Du Bois saw mm -hmm. those coming out of the 18th, 19th century leading to the 20th century, mm -hmm. racism has been at, at the front of mm -hmm. American society. And now in the 21st century, we are still having to deal with it. Now, that said, I think it's very important to, to reiterate that things have, of course, gotten much better. Mm -hmm. And I think if we had President Obama here as a threesome to talk about this, he would say, yeah, things have gotten better. But I think he would even recognize mm -hmm. that racism is still very mm -hmm. prevalent within our society today. Mm -hmm. We do have another person out there on the campaign that might falsely think mm -hmm. that, oh, you know, everything is just fine today if you just pull yourself up by the bootstrap Boots and mm -hmm. everything will be okay. And now I can, then that individual that's on the GOP campaign trail will say, well, I know a lot of other people that mm -hmm. were very successful. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, of course, you can always find those segments, but when you still see within the economic system disparities of, of fairness that's there in hiring practice and in, 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 in graduate <coughs> practice Excuse and graduate me. schools and, and, and getting CEO jobs mm -hmm. and management jobs and see pictures where women are not there and people of other ethnic groups are not there, then you have to still see these measures of racism that has to be present within the society in which we live in. In other words, I think somebody has said